this video we're going to talk about the separability axioms. We already know one of these axioms and we called it the Hausdorff condition. We said that a space X was Hausdorff if given two elements X and Y that are different, there exists two open sets U and B such that they were disjoint X belonged to U so U was a neighborhood of X and B was a neighborhood of Y. This was the Hausdorff condition and it is a separability axiom because if we think about it we have two points X and Y and we are finding two sets P and U that in a way they separate X from Y. So in any Hausdorff space we can separate different points. Well, now let's see how we can make this definition a bit stronger and have different axioms. The second countability axiom is being regular. We say that a space is regular if it separates points from closed sets. That is, if we have a point X and a closed set P that doesn't contain X, there exist two open sets, neighborhoods of X and B that are disjoint. So if we have a space that satisfies the condition for any X and any closed set B, and then we say that that space is regular. So again, this is the second countability axiom. And the typical picture we have to think about when we think about regular spaces is the following. We will have one point X in the space and a closed set B that doesn't contain X. So if our space is regular, we will be able to find two open sets, P and U, that are separating the point from the closed set. Now let's see what the third separability axiom tells us. For the third separability axiom, we are now asking for a bit more than just a point and a set. We will say that a space is normal if it separates two closed sets. Again, this is now the third separability axiom. And so now we have two sets A and B that are disjoint and closed. And if our space is normal, we are able to find these two sets U and B that separate them. And these separability axioms are very important and they will connect with the countability axioms to reach conclusions about our space. One of those conclusions is the well-known Urison's metrization theorem, which we will see in a few videos. There is one little thing that's missing from these two definitions, and that is very important, and that is whenever we talk about regular and normal spaces, we have one extra hypothesis that is not mentioned in here. To talk about regular or normal spaces, we will add that one point sets have to be closed for every element in the space. This is something that we didn't have for the Hausdorff condition, but we do have now. So this X is also a closed set. And so if our space is normal, then because it separates between closed sets and each point is a closed set, then normal implies quite trivially that space is regular. And again, because we can now separate between a point and another closed set. Then we can separate between two points. And so, again, trivially, regular implies Hausdorff. Let's write this down. Now let's work with a theorem that will give us a different characterization of regular and normal spaces. Because for these two definitions, we need either a point and a set or two closed sets. We will see that it's useful to also use the definition of regular and normal when we're working with just one point and the neighborhood of that point, or a closed set and an open set that includes it. So let's see alternative definitions for normal and regular. In the theorem, we have a topological space for which point sets are closed. Remember that without this definition, we would not be able to talk about regular or normal.
And so we have the following. The space is regular if and only if, given a point and a neighborhood of the point, there exists another neighborhood of the point, such that its closure is contained in the other. So what we have is just one point x and a neighborhood of that point u. This theorem tells us that the space is regular if and only if we can always find some set here, an open neighborhood of x, for which the closure is contained in u. And the second one says that a space is normal. We have the same thing, but now for a closed set A instead of a point. So now we have our closed set A, a neighborhood of this. And this space will be normal if and only if I can find another open neighborhood B, such that its closure is contained in U. So I should be able to do both these things for any closed set and any point in the space. Well, let's have a look at the proof. It's an if and only if, so we have to prove both directions. First, let's see that if x is regular, then given a point x, we have all this. So we're going to prove this direction. Let's start taking an element in x and u a set in the topology that contains x. So a neighborhood of x, we're taking the point and the set u in the picture. Now u is an open set, so x minus u is closed. Well, let's call this set B. So basically, if this is x and this is an open neighborhood, let's put all this in our space x. Then B is going to be all this set x minus u. And because it's closed, we have B, a closed set, that does not contain x. And in this direction, our hypothesis is that our space is regular. So because we have a point and a closed set that doesn't contain it, we can use the regularity axiom. And so, let's remember again, this is because this is regular. We know that there will exist two sets, B and W, in the topology, open sets that are disjoint such that x is an element in B and B a subset of W. Let's see if I can draw these two sets. B is a neighborhood of x, so it's going to be something like this. And W is a neighborhood of B, so it's going to be a bit tricky to draw, but essentially it's going to be something like this. And it's going to be all the rest. But remember that W is also open. But now because B is contained in W, and W and B are disjoint, then what we have is that obviously B intersection, the closure of B, is also empty. Because we find a neighborhood of any element in B that doesn't intersect. B. No element in B can be in the closure of B. But then, if this happens, then because B was x minus u, what we have is that x, well, this element of B, we know this, B obviously a subset of its closure, but not the closure of B. Because it doesn't intersect B, it has to be contained in u. And these two things were the ones we had to prove that there existed a set B such that its closure was contained in U. Okay, great. Now that was one of the directions. Now we have to prove the other one. So we have all these things that given a point X and a neighborhood of that point, there exists this other neighborhood such that its closure is contained in U. And we have to prove that the space is regular. 
To prove that the space is regular, we have to choose an element and a closed set that doesn't contain it in our space. So we start by saying let x be just some element in x be a subset of the space closed such that x is not an element in B. And because x is not in B, then x is an element in x minus B. And because B is closed, x minus B is open. Well, let's call this set U. So U is a neighborhood of x. And so because of our hypothesis, we know that there will exist some set P in the topology, so an open set, such that x is an element in B, and its closure is contained in U. So what we did is, again, let's draw the space. Let's say that this is x, this is the point x, and the set B. Because B is closed, then all this, this is the set U that is open, and we know, because of our hypothesis, that there exists this set B that's open, and its closure is contained in U. But now the closure of P is closed, so X minus the closure of P is an open set, and it obviously contains P. And so what we found are two sets, let's call this one W. We found P and W such that their intersection is empty, because obviously P cannot intersect X minus the closure of P, because P is contained in its closure. We saw that X was an element in B here, and B is a subset of W here. So given any point in the space and any closed set that doesn't contain it, we were able to find two open sets that satisfy this. And so, this we have that x is regular. This proves the first part of this theorem. However, part 2 is going to be essentially the same. All we have to do is change whenever we wrote x in x, choose write a a subset of x that's closed, and you have essentially the same proof, and with that you will finish proving this theorem.